I'm not a conceptual person that comes up with a concept and then goes to photograph what it was I thought about. It's much more about going there quite empty-minded and trying to photograph through a felt sense um, and making pictures that describe how I feel when I'm in a place. I think that the uh, picture of the washing line underneath the bridge, in a funny way, sums up the whole project of the smallness of man and the bigness of their ideas and the continuation of the normality of man amongst this unbelievably fast and, in my opinion, unnatural pace moving forward. The way that I was feeling whilst in China was actually um, a response to that what I was seeing was actually a country that was mimicking the worst of the West. It was, always a, it was almost like I was looking into a mirror the whole time, and that's what I found so upsetting. It wasn't actually China, it was what they were, um, what they were trying to be. I was always stepping back and photographing people as, as quite small in frame. And I started to realize that this had come out of previous readings that I, have, that I had read on the movement of the sublime, painters like Constable or John Martin, how they would paint people quite small, often with their back to camera, fighting the might of nature, probably depicting God. And I think that I was quite naturally taking this in and photographing people quite small against the might of China and the, um, uh, I guess, the lack of control that they have in their own destiny more than in most countries that I usually visit. I travel around looking for the semantics, looking for the iconography that, that, that allow me to form pictures that look like my work, you know, that feel like my work. And it generally isn't crowded China that, I'm, that I was that interested in. It was more right on the edges, on the periphery. When things are sparse, when things are empty, the tiny economies of gesture, the... the um, the pylons, the whatever are seen far more clearly. So I try and always pare everything down to, to its minimum. This um, architecture here, this monument, everybody in that area would, was telling me that that was a monument to the people that had been displaced. But when I spoke to the director of Still Lives, he explained to me that it isn't at all that. It's a, it's a depiction of a letter that um, is about prosperity and how the rising of the water and the damming has brought prosperity to the area, which I thought was far more in keeping with the Chinese government than 
the former. This is the um, City of Ghosts, which is um, Fengju, and the area below has been bulldozed and all the doors and windows have been brought up into the higher village to be used again. And the man sitting with his back towards me is sitting on the land that will be covered in water and looking at New Fengju, which was a city that the Chinese built to house about seven million. That was built in five years which is half the amount of time it took to get the permission, just the permission, to build um, Terminal 5 at Heathrow Airport. There were places that I returned to. I went to Chongqing three times, and each time there were new bridges there, and the place had changed, and they really do feel like pictures that that can never be taken again. When I photograph landscape, I'm after a um, some sort of questioning, some some reflection on on my own mood or um, some catalyst to make a reaction. It's not to find great lands and great great views. It's more about finding the signs that we exist. So I'm always after the extremes of cities or the outside of cities, but always where you know, places that show quite clearly the footprint or the palm print of man. I was very conscious with the with the dam area and all the way to Chongqing of how life has changed, um, how people have m had to move away from the river. You know, the intention was to photograph in China. The premise was the Yangtze and the moving water, the metaphor for for constant change. I met a man on a train who spoke quite good English, um, quite near the source, and when he heard us from England, almost got quite angry in his emotions that, you know, and was trying to describe how he felt, and he said, why do we have to destroy to, to advance? Why do we have to break everything up to, to feel like we're going forward? He said, you in England, you can go back to your birthplace and it will smell the same or, or look somewhat the same. Well, I can't go back and nobody I know can go back to where they were born. It won't look the same. <laughs> 